Hi, I'm Scott Stanfield, and I'm going to show you about the new Link data source. Now, if you've watched parts one through four, you've already seen how we've done pretty much in every project where we create our object relational mapping for the Northwind database. In this case, I've put that data mapping file inside of a Link data C sharp class. Now, this could also be VB.net. There's really nothing different here, but this time I did pretty much grab every table and throw it in there. So I'm just using Control Wheel to zoom in and out. So I'll save that. And if you need more info about this object relational mapping, uh, watch link part two. So that is now stored in this link data file. I'll add a reference to that in my link web project. So there we go. Now my link web project, I can close link data. I won't need that anymore. And everything we'll do now will be in this project. And the scenario I want to set up for you is to create a, a page in which to show and edit the um, products table. So let's do that by bringing up our toolbox here. And we'll add our trusty grid view right here to the middle. And let me go in design mode and choose to uh, choose this new data source. And this is the key to this whole presentation. We'll choose the new link data source. And you know, if you've been using .NET for a while, you've known that we've had these other data sources. But this new link one is what we're going to choose. And we'll choose the data context object. Ah, you know what I have to do? I forgot. I need to build the project first. This will get it to show up in that list. All right. Configure that data source. There we go. Now we have our link data Northwind data context. And I said we're going to look at the products table. So I'll select that. So we'll pull all the fields back right now. And under advanced, I can tell it to talk to the link data source in such a way that we're going to support automatic update, delete, and insert. Finish. And, oops, one more thing. Now I need to tell the UI to, to add buttons to support paging, sorting, editing, and deleting. All right, everything's clicked, ready to go. Let's bring this up in a browser. So right now we're going to that link data source. It's pulling back all the data. And here we are. And we can page through the different records, no problem. Let's go back to number one. And you can see I can support editing chai. I'll put Scott, update, and we're good. Now, the only problem with this, well, a lot, several problems. We have too many columns. So we want to change and get rid of a few of those. But the supplier ID and category ID, these are foreign keys to two tables, the supplier and category table. You don't really want to edit with foreign keys. That's not a very good user experience. So let's go and make the, some changes to support um, drop down combo boxes there. So first let's get rid of a couple columns we're not using like this units in stock. Hold on, let's make some more room here. So units in stock. I have to do it from this. So I select the column and then choose remove. Same with quantity. Just want to make this smaller. Remove column and let's also turn on this auto formatting. I'll choose something that looks a little bit nicer. There we go. And I'll get rid of unit price. OK. So the, the, the two columns that we're talking about, the supplier and category ID, I want to go ahead and just remove those completely. It's easier to do that in the source. If I go down here to, let's see, there's a supplier ID. And I'll delete these four rows. And I have some a code snippet over here all ready to go where I'm going to insert two template fields. OK, the first one, category. You can see I'm binding um, a, a new column called category. It's bound to, it's being sorted by the category name. But when it's evaluated at runtime, I'm going to get the category name, which comes from the category table. Now think about this for a second. We're showing the product table. Inside the product table, we have the category ID, which is a foreign key to the table category. That requires a join. But if you've seen the other link videos, you know that when I use the object relational mapping, those joins are taken care of for me. So when I dereference the category table, it will take care of doing the join to those two tables, both category and supplier. So let's um, switch back to design, make sure it looks right. There we go. View it in a browser. There we go. Beverages, exotic liquids. Good. So we have the read-only mode working, but watch when I hit edit, we can't change it now. So we need to tell that column what to do when we go into edit mode. So the way we do that, this is a little tricky, we'll select the category table, go to edit template for category, 
and we have an item alternating. The one I care about is right here, edit template, edit item template. And what I want to show when we go into edit mode for this column is a drop down list box. Now the drop down list, think about it, we know the, in this case, the category ID is a number like four. We want to bind that four to the name, you know, um, beverages. So we need to create a new data source to go and get the mapping for that category ID to the category name. And I'm going to create not, I don't want to reuse the existing one because it's already in use right now, showing the current product uh, grid. So let's create a new one to link and I'll call this the category data source. Okay, good. And categories is selected by default, that's fine. I only need the category ID and name and then I can finish. Now, I have to change this, otherwise we're, we're going to be right back where we started and showing the category IDs. I want to show the name. And then finally, I need to edit the data binding such that when the current row changes in the product in the product table, I need to take the selected value and bind it to the category ID. All right, let's save that. And let's do the same thing for the supplier item template. Drop down list. Choose a new data source. Oh, by the way, notice the one that we just created. I went kind of fast there, but the one that we just created did not show up in that list. Um, that's going to be, that's because it's scoped um, to that particular t um, template. So we're going to have to move it out later in, in the next part of this demo. But for now, let's get the supplier data source. Good. Choose the supplier table. And again, we just need the ID and the company name. And we'll show the company name there. And then edit the data binding to map the selected value to the supplier ID. Okay, now if all this works, a lot of clicking, but if it all works, we should see the category name and supplier available in the drop-down combo when we go to edit mode. So there's chai, beverages, great. So look, I can change chai, let's say it's a condiment. I don't know if you'd want to sprinkle chai tea on your cereal, but let's say you want to, and it, let's say it comes from pavlova, and I can update, and there we go, it's now condiment. So because this is my database, let me move it back. I think that was exotic liquids. So good, we've got a pretty cool little update scenario here. Um, let's do one more thing. Let's make it so this entire page is um, selected. You can filter the whole page by, um, the, 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 let's say, the, the category right here in the middle. So to do that, let's go into source mode. It's just a little bit easier. Go to the top of the file. Um, and right here, let's stick in a new div tag for uh, category.